Museums do a lot of different things. They preserve history, give us insight into different ideas and cultures, and help us think more deeply about the world around us. And every once in a while, they revitalize the world around us as well, like the Berkshire's city of North Adams, once a struggling former mill town that got a new breath of life from the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, Mass Mocha. A close-up documentary explores just how a bunch of rundown, abandoned factory buildings became the largest museum for contemporary art in the world, and what the transformation meant for North Adams. My grandmother worked for 47 years in this building as an immigrant to this country, knowing that her children and her grandchildren would have a better life. That's what was built in these buildings, and I do believe it's the character that is embedded in these buildings. The film is called Museum Town, narrated by the great Meryl Streep. It premieres tonight here on GBH, and it's the first for director Jennifer Trainer, one of the key people who brought Mass Mocha's vision to life and worked there for 28 years as its first director of development. Jennifer, it's good to meet you. Congratulations on a great film. Thank you so much. So when the idea was hatched in the mid-'80s by Tom Kearns, then of Williams College, to convert this huge abandoned electric plant into a huge museum. What was the state of North Adams? Sprague Electric had just left. It was a, it was a one company town, you know, 12,000 people lived in the city, 4,000 worked at Sprague. So it was like the, the plug had been pulled on the, the entire economy. It was, it was in very bad shape. And despite the fact that obviously that economy needed a jolt, there was skepticism, which I think is an understatement from the mayor <laughs> Barrett, on down, my favorite skeptic to whom you dedicated the film is Ruth Irene Yarder. She died at 93 in 2018. Here's just a little piece of this incredible person. I started working at Sprague's in 1943. All the fellows were going into the service and they needed women to work. So they came to high school and if your grades were up, you could get out of school early and that's how most of us started working in Sprague's. I worked there 43 years, and that's the only job I ever had. Ultimately, she comes around, becomes a volunteer. One of her great lines later, she's looking at an exhibit, and she says, is that part of something, or is that it? Which I totally love. What did turn the skeptics in town around, Jennifer? Well, first, first I would say that, you know, contemporary art was about as popular as camel wrestling. In <laughs> Secondly, you know, the people of North Adams, like Jane Swift, you know, her grandparents worked there, her mm -hmm. great-grandparents worked there. They wanted another factory. They would have been happy with a mousetrap factory. Mm -hmm. I mean, contemporary art was not on anybody's radar. Um, when I first met Ruth, I asked her what she thought of the idea of a contemporary art museum. And she said, not much. <laughs> so there, I, I think that initially what turned people around is that there was no other option. They sort of begrudgingly accepted it. And one of the reasons I made this film is because I felt like I was witness to this extraordinary story that just, you know, it was a putt to the moon. Well, you got to the moon, I should say. Another obstacle beyond the local skeptics, Mike Dukakis was a big supporter, $35 million of state money, big supporter. His successor, Bill Weld, not so much. It seems that Jane Swift, who was then the state senator from there, and you and others convinced him to come out and see the place. And it was an exhibit by this guy, who actually was on this show last year, that may have helped turn Weld around. Here's David Byrne. I thought, I think I can do something that works in a raw space. So I made a proposal. A kind of verbal collage of self-help tapes, motivational speeches, and rap lyrics. So you'd have like a little old lady reading this gangster rap lyrics, and it was sometimes kind of really jarring and sometimes kind of disturbing because it sounded really cute. So as disturbing as it was that apparently it or he turned Bill Weld around, what did do it with Governor Weld? You know, it, it was amazing. Here you've got Dukakis, who is a Democrat. Weld comes in. He's a, you know, sort of um, a white shirt Republican, <laughs> um, you know, uh, patriarch. Um, 
he was on his way to his family's hunting camp in the Adirondacks mm -hmm. and he stopped by and he, he asked to see what we were going to do. And we showed him this and as David Byrne expresses, you know, it was a little bit raunchy. And he, he said to us, so if I grant you $35 million, is this the kind of art that you're going to show? And he sort of said, yup. And he said, and I, I actually, I'm not going to say what he said, but the, the, the key is that he was a big talking heads fan. Yeah. By the way, he, he hunted said, wild boar at his place in the Adirondacks, if you didn't. Oh, Did, wow. didn't know that. You know, I should have said up front, by the way, we have limited time, though. This whole film, this story, is weaved around the immense and powerful installation of Nick Cave, which was just surreal. And you'll get to see the creation of that literally from moment one uh, uh, in this film. So it opens, it prospers, it becomes a performance center, a huge, huge and beautiful and powerful museum. And what happens to North Adams as a result, Jennifer? Well, you know, North Adams is certainly a lot better than it was. I mean, Mass Mocha brings, you know, several hundred thousand visitors to North Adams every single year. And, and the Berkshires are a cultural economy. People come to Tanglewood, people come to Jacob's sure. Pillow. They never came to North Adams. So that gave North Adams access to a very lucrative tourism market. But one thing I wanted to show is that it's not over. The story was not, you know, it, it, we did it, it's done, thank you. Um, I wanted to show how hard it is to do that and how it's never so clear cut. It's complicated to, to weave a contemporary art mm -hmm. culture into a blue collar town. And it's a very interesting city as a result. You told a beautiful story. Uh, Jennifer, thanks so much, and I really encourage everybody to watch it tonight. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much.